It is therefore time for members' statements. Members' statements. The member from Bruce Gray, Owen Sutton. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. What an honour it is to rise today to pay tribute to the great people of Wyarton, whose vibrant community has been named in the top three happiest places in Canada by Expedia.ca. There were 765,000 Instagram posts about this thriving Four Seasons community, according to blogger Carolyn Alby, who sorted through more than 100,000 conversations for hashtags like hashtag cheerful, hashtag blessed, and hashtag happy to find the happiest places in the country. Apart from the fact that the town of Wyarton simply has it all, towering bluffs of the Niagara, Niagara Escarpment, and views of Colpoise and Georgian Bay, Albie says that the Wyarton Willie Festival, Ontario's biggest winter festival and, without a shadow of a doubt, a must-see prediction ceremony for every Ontario and Canadian, is one reason people feel so good about Wyarton. Wyarton ranked behind Canada's surfing capital, Tofino, BC, and Lake Louise, Banff, Alberta, which was voted as the happiest place in the country. No other town or city in southwestern Ontario made the top 40 list by Expedia, Mr. Speaker. South Bruce Peninsula Mayor Janice Jackson says the only thing that surprised her was that Wyarton did not make top honours as number one. And I have to concur with the mayor on that point, Mr. Speaker, being a proud Wyartonian. I've spent a lot of my life in Wyarton, as most people know. As Wyarton is expecting record numbers of tourists in 2018, the community is abuzz with activities, including the completion of the new tourism centre in my hometown of Hepworth. And so I invite all members and everyone listening to visit our little piece of heaven as early as February 2nd for Groundhog Day and meet the late Wyarton Willie's understudy, Wee Willie. Happy Wyatt. That stuff writes itself. The member from London West, the member statement. Thank you, Speaker. As London digs out from a walloping of snow this week, stories are being told of random acts of snow removal. Snow angels are appearing with shovels or snow blowers to assist seniors, persons with disabilities, and people who just need a helping hand. London's Snow Angel program, which matches volunteer shovelers with those who need assistance, started in 2015 through the efforts of Lincoln McArdle and the web firm Similamp. McArdle calls it an experiment in kindness, something that links into what people are already doing and formalizes how Londoners help each other. And I can tell you, Speaker, Londoners are helping each other in extraordinary ways. When my sister's place, a day shelter for vulnerable women, faced an unexpected and costly sewage problem that could have forced the end of evening programming, word got out and dollars poured in, including $10,000 from the London Police Association and $77,000 from Shoppers Drug Mart. This month, an anonymous donor provided funding for five years of extended evening and weekend hours. In October, Youth Opportunities Unlimited received the largest cash donation in its 35-year history to support an innovative housing-first project for youth, young mothers and mothers-to-be who are experiencing or at risk of homelessness. The YOU New Edition will now be known as the Jones Smith Building for Youth, thanks to a generous $1 million donation from the Smith family. Speaker, at this time of year, I want to commend the many, many Londoners who are finding ways to care for each other, financial or otherwise, and to help those in need. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from Beaches is short. Well, thank you, Speaker. In the spirit of the season, well, the House will soon be rising, and though it's not surprising, members' faces are all aglow. Let it show, let it show, let it show. The Premier is back from China, and the economy, it couldn't be finer. Lots of deals and jobs will flow. Let it grow, let it grow, let it grow. The Tories have released a new scheme. It follows a typical old theme. Twelve billion in cuts they show. Just say no, just say no, just say no. The third party is all a fluster. Their plan is full of bluster. Selling Hydra was not their show. So just let it go, let it go, let it go. The speaker can move with lightning. Warnings can be quite frightening. Decorum is what he knows. Let him know. Let him know. Let him know. <laughs> Hillier is outside and vaping. Young kids could be imitating. He has nowhere else to go, so let him blow. Let him blow. Let him blow. <laughs> and next year we'll legally be smoking what Cheech and Chong were toking. And watch our revenues grow. Make it so. Make it so. Make it so. Soon we'll be in our writings, bringing joy, true love, and glad tidings. For a white Christmas, we'll all want some snow. So, Speaker, let it snow, let it snow, 
Let it snow. <laughs> I think we are invaded. We are invaded by the ghost of Rosario Marchese. Oh my God. Further member statement. The member from Leeds, Grenville. Uh, thank you, uh, Speaker. It's with uh, profound sadness that I rise to pay tribute to uh, Barbara Woodman. Barbara died uh, November 30th at age 70 from syst uh, systemic scleroderma-associated pulmonary arterial hypertension. <clears throat> PAH is an aggressive lung disease and common complication for scleroderma. The disease took a terrible toll on Barbara. But, Speaker, she was a fighter against her illness and in challenging our health care system to do better. Uh, Barbara wrote to me in October after the uh, Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care uh, denied her request for the drug of Travi for a second time. Her letter is featured in the winter issue of Scleroderma Canada magazine. I wrote to the minister, and I'm, I'm devastated that Barbara died before our system could help. I want to make a clear speaker. I rise not to make this a partisan issue. That's not what her husband of uh, 48 years, Paul, her sons Scott and Brent, and daughter Stephanie want. As Stephanie wrote, we hope my mother's story will help benefit others that are also sharing their plea for treatments not accessible to them through public funding in Ontario. For many suffering with this condition, these treatments are a matter of life or death. Speaker, no family should lose a loving wife, a mother, and grandmother because a life-saving drug is too expensive. Barbara wanted our health care system to do better, and I think we owe it to Barbara and the many Ontarians like her whose tragic stories MPPs have shared too often to create that system as their legacy. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements from member from Kenora Rainy River. Thank you, Speaker. Ten days ago, northwestern Ontario was walloped with a winter storm that brought with it more than a foot of snow in some areas. While that may not be noteworthy in and of itself, what is remarkable is that ten days later, motorists are still grappling with the remnants of that storm on our highways. Parts of the Trans-Canada Highway, our country's main artery, still cannot be seen as it lies underneath layers of packed snow and glare ice in many areas across the Northwest. This is despite the fact that the MTO deems it a Class II highway, giving area contractors 16 hours to restore it to bare pavement. It appears as though these road clearing standards mean little, if anything, to area contractors, as my offices are still inundated with complaints from northerners who are unnecessarily put at risk due to shoddy maintenance. I've heard from seniors who have gone off the road, seasoned truck drivers who are unable to control their rigs, and quite alarmingly, from a father and infant who were trapped in their vehicle days after the storm ended. The response from the MTO has been that there are ongoing concerns with MCON and that financial nonconformance penalties have been issued, but that seems to have little effect on the condition of the roads and the resulting risks imposed on Northerners who have no other transportation options. Northerners are tired of the same old tune each and every winter, and they want to know when this government will prioritize our highways and our safety. Thank you. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from Davenport. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This weekend, I had the privilege of hosting my fourth annual holiday open house to celebrate the close of another year with some great holiday treats and some festive holiday cheer. And it gave me an opportunity to, uh, to gather with many of the constituents from my riding of Davenport and many of the community organizations, and an opportunity to thank all of the organizations that serve Davenport for all of the work that they do and for everyone in the community who works every day to make our neighborhood stronger and more connected. My open house was also an opportunity to welcome new art in my constituency office. This month, my constituency office is showcasing the work of local Davenport artists, and I was lucky to get to show some pieces from Brian Rideout, who earlier this year won the Premier's Award for Excellence in the Arts as the Emerging Artist of the Year. Nice. As well, art was provided by seniors from the Davenport Perth Neighbourhood Community Health Centre, whose seniors art group received funding from the Seniors Community Grant. This fantastic initiative keeps seniors active and engaged through art classes and Davenport seniors produce truly magnificent work of art. Both of these art showcases will be in my office until the end of the month of December.
Mr. Speaker, I'm so proud to represent Davenport because of all that our community um, offers and gives. It is such a vibrant, interesting, and lively place. And as we are approaching the holiday season, I want to take this opportunity to wish everyone a restful and happy holiday season and a healthy and safe new year. Thank you. Thank you. Further for statements, the member from Scarborough Rouge River. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Canada has been a world leader when it comes to defending human rights. Today in Myanmar, we are witnessing a very gross human rights violation. The Myanmar army has worked in unison with the various extremist vigilantes to systematically target Muslim Rohingya civilians. Many were killed and raped. Villages were intentionally raided and burned. Any remaining villages have been denied access to vital supply. Since August 25, 645,000 people have fled Myanmar to Bangladesh. 80,000 plus people are currently stuck with Myanmar, either internally displaced or in concentration camp. According to the secret agreement signed by Myanmar and Bangladesh, starting in January 23rd, the Rohingya refugees can return back to Myanmar. Mr. Speaker, it is obvious that the Rohingya refugees don't trust the Myanmar, would treat them any better than it has done the last three months. The following needs to be done. Establish a safe zone managed by UN peacekeepers with a mandate to defend and protect the people under their jurisdiction. Review the honorary Canadian citizenship bestowed to Aung San Suu Kyi. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, last April, I tabled Bill 109 to unanimous support here in this House. The Reliable Elevator Act, if passed, will reg regulate elevator repairs across Ontario. This past Halloween, a major elevator company was fined $50,000 for five violations, including letting an unsafe elevator run in, Toronto, in, uh, in a Toronto condo. Prior to that, in January, the same company was fined $375,000 for a potentially fatal safety law breach where a man was injured. At the, at the College Park Courthouse, escalator had been out for two years, forcing people with canes and strollers to climb two flights of stairs. I'm grateful that Minister McCharles and the Ministry of Government and Consumer Services for supporting this bill, and to Technical Standard and Safety Authority for commissioning a report on elevator reliability. Speaker, with the rapid growth of super high rise in Toronto, Ontario's building code must be updated as well. This is more than just about mechanics, reliability, and convenience. It's a safety issue for at-risk people like seniors who require regular transportation to and from their homes. It's also about our first responders getting to their jobs quickly and safely. It's about one of the, our most used vehicles functioning properly for those who live in the vertical community in Toronto. Lastly, I want to wish everyone in the House Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member for Whitby, Oshawa. Speaker, I rise this afternoon to highlight the 2017 recipients of the Business Achievement Awards provided by the Whitby Chamber of Commerce. Since 1955, the Chamber has honoured outstanding local businesses in the community, demonstrating a passion for excellence, commitment to community, and entrepreneurial spirit. And many businesses in Whitby, Speaker, spend countless hours making their local community a better place. And these business awards are a way of recognizing those contributions. The winners this year, Speaker, are the Brock Street Brewing Company, mm. Collins Barrel Durham, the Ability Centre that we well know, <laughs> Durham Escape Rooms, and the Business Person of the Year, John Draper from Together We Rock. Speaker, it's crucial that we take the opportunity to celebrate local businesses, and I congratulate uh, all the winners. I'd also like to take a moment this afternoon, Speaker, to congratulate Kathy Beatty from my constituency office, who was a recipient last week of the Paul Harris Award. This is the highest award that a Rotarian can, uh, can receive from their club, which in my case and her case is the Whitby Sunrise Club. 
It acknowledges the outstanding contribution and exceptional service that Kathy has made to the Whitby community overall. And speaker, I'd like to take this opportunity to congratulate all the award recipients from the chamber, but more importantly, Kathy Beatty for the work she's doing in building up the town of Whitby. Service above self, Speaker. Well done. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements. It's their